we are doing the deep dive on PyQGIS. We learned how to add a button to a toolbar, how to add an item to a menu item and control its behavior. Let's work with some data. We have some vector layers that are given to you in the data package. You want to see how we can load external data sources into QGIS using this class. So the QGIS, let's see the... So the, Q, the QGIS interface class, which we are accessing using the iFace variable, has many options such as add vector layer. So you have a method here called add vector layer. So you can say iFace.add vector layer. You can give the path to a vector layer, the name of the layer that will be displayed, and then optionally a provider. So we'll say what provider you want to use. QGIS can load some data set using multiple different ways. So again, we can use this method to load some data. So let's see how to do this. So first we want to define the path to the layer that we want to load. So we have our data directory. We got a path to that. Inside of that, we have some data layers. Let's load this layer called seismiczones.shp. I want to load it to QGIS. So first I need a path to the seismic zone. So that is the file name is seismiczones.shp. And we can construct a path using this OS path join method and we get a path. So I'm going to print this. I've named my variable URI because when you have files such as shapefile, the file a path is obvious. It's just a full path to the shapefile and we can add it. What if you want to add a post GIS layer? What if you want to add a database layer from MySQL? What if you have geo package and you want to add one layer from that? So the path will actually be defined differently for different types of data sources. And that's why the path may not be as simple as a file path. It may be a special path that shows the QGIS how to read a table from a database. You can now say iface dot add vector layer and it takes three arguments. What's the path to the vector layer we want to add? What's the name of the layer and what provider we want to use? And QGIS uses OGR as a provider for vector layers and GDAL as a provider for raster layers. There are some data sets such as NetCDF. You can use both GDAL as well as a mesh data provider for this. It can be read using multiple providers. That's why you have an option for specifying that. Let's run this. And you can see I ran this code and it loaded this shape file into QGIS. This kind of thing is very helpful where you want to have your plugins or your customizations, which can load data from a variety of different sources. I see many enterprise plugins where you have certain data store and you, your plugin allows your users to easily access those data stores without them having to know where they are stored. So they just install the plugin, your plugin knows how to find those. And then you can just give them a nice drop down and say, load this layer. And it just goes and loads this layer. So you can use code like this to do it. I also want to load a data from a geo package. So for example, we have this geo package called sf.geo package. A geo package is a file format which can have multiple layers inside of that. So I, I want to load a zoning layer from this geo package. How do I specify the path? If I just say load this geo package, it'll load all four layers. I need to specify and say, I have a geo package, load this layer from inside. So in this case, we'll have to specify the file name like this. We'll say, I want to go to sf.g package. And within that, so I need to use this type, which will say, I have a geo package. I want to load the layer, which is called zoning. And this is the syntax for doing this. And this says, read the zoning layer from sfgeo package, and that's your URI. And now I can say my URI is this, and I can add this to my QGIS. Let's run this. And you can see now I've loaded the zoning layer from that. There are different data sources which have different URI patterns to describe how to load the data. If you want to know how, what are the different parts, QGIS has a really nice documentation. So I want to introduce the PyQGIS cookbook to you. This is one of the best references for PyQGIS developers. This is a section in the official QGIS documentation called PyQGIS Developer Cookbook. And they have different sections and code snippets that'll show you how to do most common operations. 
This is not like a class documentation. This is called the actual Python code snippets that you can use. Inside of this, there's a section on vector layers, which shows you how to add different vector layers. If you want to add a shape file, this is how you should do it. If you want to add geo package, this is how you should do it. If you want to go to add a PostGIS database, this is how you can set your URI and add that and so on. Right? So this page has a lot of documentation on how to add, add different kinds of data. How do we add a CSV data? Well, you have documentation on how to do this. Once you have a URI, you can just call layer, and the layer will be loaded to QGIS. Try out the snippet from section 6.1.8. Copy this and make sure you have both the seismic zones and the zoning layer loaded in your QGIS. So all of you, now we have loaded the two layers here. Let's see if we can change the layer names. So we have this QGIS. How can I go and change the layer name? One of the very useful functions that you'll use in QGIS is to get the current layer, currently selected layer. So the QGIS interface class iFace has this method called active layer. Very useful when coding as well as when you're testing something. You just say, I want to test this something on my layer. I just want to get a layer. It'll, whatever layer is selected, you can use iFace.active layer and it'll give you the reference to that layer. So let's say I've selected this layer. And if I print this, let's see what we get. So you can say this is an object of type QGS vector layer. And now I have the reference to that object of QGS vector type, I can do something. You can call layer.name, which will give you the name of the current layer. So you can see my current layer is zoning. It's quite helpful to know what is the name of the current layer that's been set. You can also change the name. You can say layer dot set name and change it to some name. So let's try this. We'll say this is all the layers from San Francisco. We want to say go and whatever active layer is selected, we'll name, rename it by adding a SF prefix to it. So I'll say my name will become layer.name and I want to set the new name to be a score, whatever name was there. So I'll just add an SF prefix to my currently selected layer. So I've selected zoning, run the code, run the code, it'll name it SF zoning. If I select this layer and run this, it's going to add it as SF seismic zones. A simple code snippet, but you know, sometimes it's very helpful. I remember using this, somebody sent me a project and they said, I have 200 layers. I want to rename all of them, delete some of them, just write a for loop and you can kind of do this automatically without having to manually do something like this. So try this out, try the code snippet from section 6.1.9, where you can go and rename the zoning layer. We know how to check what is the name of the layer. We know how to display a message. Let's combine those two and do our next exercise. Big now you can explain our next exercise.